hello friends so <clears throat> till now we have gone through the transportation of gases now into last lecture we have discussed about various factors which are affecting the rate of transport of gases and in this lecture we are going to see the transportation of gases that is oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide transport individually so first we are about to see the transportation of oxygen and then we are going to see transportation of carbon dioxide if we remember <coughs> and recall we have already seen that majority of the oxygen is transported in the form of oxyhemoglobin very little or negligible quantity of oxygen is getting <coughs> transported through physical solution that is into the dissolved state so hemoglobin is the adaptation for transportation of the oxygen now if we remind the transport of carbon dioxide is, is by three way number one in the form of carbonic acid that is very little in the form of carbomino hemoglobin uh, mediatory and main transportation of carbon dioxide is by bicarbonate ions now that is what we are about to understand individually now so let us discuss first about the transportation of gases and in that specifically carbon dioxide uh, sorry oxygen transportation so transportation of oxygen if i talk about <coughs> it is by two way as we have discussed earlier number one it is into the physical solution in the form of physical solution <coughs> it is dissolved into the blood plasma according to the uh, 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 the uh, number which is given into the textbook it is three percent maximum three percent of the oxygen is dissolved into the physical solution right now if i talk about second mode of the transportation of oxygen it is as oxyhemoglobin and according to the textual figure it is 97 percent right so average 97 percent of the oxygen is, is transported by rbc rbc is consisting hemoglobin on its surface as we know so oxygen binds with hemoglobin in reversible manner right to form oxyhemoglobin and this process is termed as oxygenation now each hemoglobin as we know that having four heme units and that is the reason why single hemoglobin molecule can carry four oxygen as one heme can bind with one oxygen so if we see entire mechanism in the form of equation which is given below right uh, at the surface of lungs where partial pressure of oxygen is high and partial pressure of the carbon dioxide is very low in that situation hemoglobin is going to bind with oxygen and it is forming the oxyhemoglobin but if we think about the situation at the tissue it is completely reversed as 
tissues are having low partial pressure of oxygen and high partial pressure of carbon dioxide that is why these hb4 o8 that is oxyhemoglobin will be again reversely reacting to form hemoglobin and oxygen so oxygen will be dissociated from the hemoglobin and that is how it can be easily diffused into the tissues or cells where it is needed ready so that's the importance of a uh, reversibility of formation of hemoglobin and dissociation of oxyhemoglobin right so formation of oxyhemoglobin it is hemoglobin plus oxygen and dissociation again oxyhemoglobin will be converted into hemoglobin molecules and oxygen will be separated out and that is how it is allowing it is allowed to be free and can dissolve into the cells so this is how the situation is happening at both surfaces of lungs and surfaces of tissues right and that is how oxygen is getting transported now uh, please take the screenshot of this slide now if <coughs> we think about the bonding mechanism the association or binding of oxygen with the hemoglobin is largely depending on partial pressure of oxygen partial pressure of carbon dioxide and proton concentration and at last temperature there, so there are four factors which are affecting the bonding of oxygen right first is partial pressure of oxygen second is partial pressure of carbon dioxide third is proton gradient and fourth is temperature this is very very important with respect to neat and your board examination uh, not into the board actually because this is 11th chapter so board uh, uh, let us forget but with respect to neat it is very important these four factors four parameters right in many respect it is important so let us discuss all those aspects in alveoli there is high partial pressure of oxygen and low partial pressure of carbon dioxide and proton even lower temperature so only one partial pressure of oxygen is high at alveoli rest of all three parameters are at the lower concentration or lower pressure so these factors are favoring the formation of oxy oxyhemoglobin and if i talk about the condition into the tissues only one factor is low that is oxygen partial pressure the rest all three are high ready high pco2 high proton ions and higher temperature and that is why it is forming the dissociation mechanism it is favoring the dissociation so association high oxygen pressure and other that is pco2 low h plus ion concentration low and temperature low but dissociation low oxygen and high pco2 high proton concentration and high temperature so these conditions are to be remembered 
so that is how deformation or uh, dissociation of oxyhemoglobin is depending on so these are the four major factor what we have discussed now so the last thing what we are discussing uh, with the uh, four parameters and oxygen transport is every 100 ml of the oxygenated blood can deliver around 5 ml of oxygen to the tissues fine so every 100 ml blood which is flowing out of the lungs full with the oxygen and reaching to the tissues is delivering the 5 ml of oxygen to the tissues that is under normal physiological condition not into the condition of the exercise or hyperactivity of your body that also to be remembered fine fine let us go move ahead and before we move ahead please take the screenshot of this slide fine that's the graph which is shown into the textbook as well and it is given at the same photograph i have taken in the slide this is uh, the oxygen or hemoglobin dissociation curve ready oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve so odc the short form of this graph is now there are two parameters which are shown here parameter number one is partial pressure of oxygen which is given here it is po2 right and on y axis it is a percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen it is called for saturation it is called s o2 so po2 versus s o2 it is a simplest representation of this graph right so on x axis you have partial pressure of oxygen in mmhg and on y axis you have percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen so as the partial pressure of oxygen is increasing the saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen is also increasing and it is represented by this sigmoid graph ready so if you observe the graph it is a sigmoid curve which is obtained when the percentage of saturation of the hb which o2 plotted against the partial pressure of oxygen po2 now why we are studying this plot or graph right. to know whether individuals health with respect to metabolic activity is correct or not ready and that is why the main important factors which are affecting the rate of oxygen and hemoglobin binding what we have uh, seen just before few minutes number one what we have said po2 number two pco2 number three h plus concentration so these are the main factor which are associated associated with this dissociation curve similar right so uh, partial pressure of oxygen partial pressure of carbon dioxide partial pressure uh, sorry uh, proton concentration and temperature these are the four main factor which are affecting this uh, plot or this graph fine so that's what which is given uh, into the textbook please take the screenshot now this is a summary of gaseous exchange in lungs and tissue what we have already seen um, let us conclude very rapidly the pulmonary artery which is taking deoxygenated blood right it is removing the carbon dioxide getting the oxygen and converted into the oxygenated blood so deoxygenated 
blood converted into oxygenated blood and it is reaching out of the lungs by pulmonary vein and situation is reversed or inverted into the tissue level and it is described into the diagram uh, you can easily understand if you see the diagram and try to correlate what we have seen till now ready so please uh, take the screenshot of the diagram uh, partial pressure measurement has been indicated what we have already uh, discussed into the previous lecture ready fine okay uh, uh, this is uh, again the dissociation curve what we have understood uh, fine this one is one of the important factor what we are about to discuss now the oxygen dissociation curve characteristic feature fine number one if i talk about in the lungs the partial pressure is approximately 100 mmhg right of what of o2 if i think about partial pressure of oxygen is 100 nearly 100 we have seen this measure so we know it is 100 mm hg so uh, in on the x axis if i see 100 mm hg right that is why we have mentioned here it is a situation of lung so it is from deoxygenated it is converted into oxygenated blood right so it red color shows oxygenated blood and that saturation is we if we calculate 98 percentage so in lungs its affinity reaches to 98 percent so oxygen and carbon dioxide association increasing into the lung by 98 percent so blood which is reaching deoxygenated blood which is reaching to the lungs will be converted into oxygenation right by oxygenation it is converted into oxygenated blood and at that time 98 percent of hemoglobin will be or uh, uh, hemoglobin will be converted into oxyhemoglobin that is what meaning of uh, what we have understood till now ready so only two percentage will be left because blood is flowing so that error is possible by flown mechanism right so blood is flowing so only two percentage is remaining to convert into oxyhemoglobin now if i talk about situation into the tissues where partial pressure of oxygen is 40 that is uh, the, these term also these uh, unit also we know so it has lower affinity for binding of oxygen and hemoglobin so easily it can be detached and that is how look when it is reaching to the tissue it has to dissociate for dissociation we requires less affinity and that will be done by p o2 which is there into the tissues it is having lower oxygen concentration and that is why low pressure and that is why low affinity so this is very important to understand and please do remember these terms with respect to NEET examination ready it is very important and that is why I, I, I am putting pressure uh, in describing these terms <coughs> please take the screenshot of this slide Uh, one value the terminology p50 is given now uh, as it is actually extra with reference to uh, a neat examination or your board uh, preparation it is not required so i am not going to focus so hugely into the slides it is extremely extra which is given 
so uh, but that I am actually defining here into this slide. Uh, again it is oxygen partial pressure on x axis and hemoglobin saturation on y axis the same uh, graph right oxygen dissociation curve ODC it is which is mentioned there on the top it is ODC right oxygen dissociation curve. Now to calculate average mechanism of shifting of this curve either right side or left side uh, sometimes question may be asked this way. So, P 50 is the point on the graph where you have partial pressure at 50 percentage right. So, oxygen partial pressure when it is reaching to the uh, uh, the effect where it has saturation of 50 percentage that point is known as P 50. So, that is what you are supposed to remember point P 50. So, per 50 percentage of the hemoglobin is saturated that point is taking as a reference or taken as a reference. So, with that reference point graph or curve may shift to your right side or may shift to your left side under the circumstances what we know the factors which are affecting the dissociation which are the major factors number one temperature number two carbon dioxide pressure diphosphoglyceric acid and pH this one is new for us both look we have already discussed about the temperature and pressure of carbon dioxide ready so let us discuss individually number one if I talk about the situation where the graph is shifting to left side now when this situation is going to occur fine partial pressure of carbon dioxide when it is decreased temperature when it is decreased if asked diphosphoglyceric acid level decrease and pH increased these are the four parameters you are supposed to remember if that happens if all this parameter works temperature pressure of carbon dioxide and diphosphoglyceric acid level if drops down and pH increases then P50 from point of P50 the entire curve is shifting to the left side but if I talk about the situation where it is shifting to right side in this particular situation what we can observe is temperature partial pressure of carbon dioxide and the quantity of diphosphoglyceric acid is increasing and the pH drops down in this situation it decreases the affinity right so the curve is moving towards your right side ready so when curve is moving towards left side or right side is depending on these major uh, points or factors temperature carbon dioxide pressure diphosphoglyceraldehyde glycic acid and pH 
so this is also one of the important factor to be understood and to be discussed important for neat so please uh, take a screenshot Uh, this is uh, showing uh, a right shift or left shift mechanism you take a screenshot and uh, you will definitely getting uh, uh, the points after reading that uh, what it is saying fine <coughs> uh, this is uh, something which is not given either into the textbook and not even given to so many reference books but if you think about two to three different parameters or characteristic features now if i talk about the characteristic feature of normal association of hemoglobin and oxygen hemoglobin combined with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin shows these graph what we have seen as oxygen dissociation curve but if i am comparing these with myoglobin and hemoglobin's affinity towards carbon monoxide the curves are different right so let us discuss first about myoglobin we know the myoglobin is a special kind of molecule of hemoglobin which is find uh, which is found into the skeletal muscles so there a single chained heme pigment found into the skeletal muscles we have four chained hemoglobin it is single chain myoglobin it has increased affinity for oxygen compared to normal hemoglobin so if you see curve is shifted towards the left side affinity is highly greater fine so it is binding with oxygen even at lower partial pressure of oxygen that's the main key factor why myoglobin is high with its affinity fine if i talk about carbon monoxide carbon monoxide affinity is comparatively very huge than oxygen that is why its curve which is uh, by the broken line it is given very high affinity so when it is a competition between carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide carbon monoxide affinity towards uh, the uh, conjugation of uh, conjugation with hemoglobin is very high so it is competition between carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide in that case carbon monoxide wins the race so it is compare comparison between this three uh, different set of the uh, reactions right so this is also one of the important uh, point to be remembered uh, it is uh, i don't think so it is uh, so hugely affecting your neat examination or it is concerned with the Uh, examination but it uh, used to be very important to describe that's why i have already uh, described it please take the screenshot for your reference uh this is also actually not important with the uh, either into the it is not given into the textbook or it is not uh, into the syllabus or of neat but then also uh, let us uh, discuss uh, two kind of effects which are seen uh, one effect is known as the halden effect and the second effect is said as the bohr effect both are different uh, uh, scientist which have uh, actually described the method Uh, of the exchange of gases at both the level first alveoli level and second tissue level so at the alveoli you see the halden effect now what happens is that in alveoli partial pressure of oxygen is very high right it is very high partial pressure of oxygen which makes carbon dioxide and proton 
unloading that is dissociation fine let me describe it through the diagram now the alveoli where oxygen is very high so that oxygen is going or shifting by the difference of the pressure into the blood reaches to the surface of rbc where you have deoxy hemoglobin right now deoxy hemoglobin actually has the proton molecule into them now in presence of this oxygen it removes the proton so deoxy hemoglobin removes the proton when it views or when it gets oxygen so in presence of oxygen protons will be released from hemoglobin that's what you are supposed to remember and that o2 will bind with deoxy hemoglobin so you find now oxy hemoglobin now similarly carbonate moves into the rbc now to compensate the ph chlorine is moving out so one negative charged particle is coming in and second is moving out so it balances the ph so hco3 from outside and proton from hemoglobin combined to form h2co3 right carbonic acid and this carbonic anhydrase dissociate the carbon dioxide and water from h2co3 carbonic acid and that is why now carbon dioxide is available to move inside the alveoli so that is described by halden and that is how it is known as halden effect fine okay let us talk the bohr effect now it is happening at the tissue level now what happens is that at tissue level they have low oxygen partial pressure and high carbon dioxide partial pressure so due to the high carbon dioxide partial pressure that carbon dioxide is moving into blood reacting with the water converted back into h2co for carbonic acid again proton and carbonate will be formed carbonate will move out and chlorine will move in which is reversed of this situation right so by carbon sorry carbonates will be moving out chlorine will be shifting in now this proton is gradually getting increased so low po2 high pco2 high proton which leads to deoxy hb and separation of oxygen dissociation what we say so oxygen will be free and it is actually moves into tissues cells so this is happening inside uh, the blood at the surface of the rbc at tissue level so oxygen will be dissociated and will be shifted or will be fused uh into the medium and diffused into the tissues so it will be reaching into the cells so this is actually described by bohr and that is why this effect is known as bohr effect so please take the screenshot for your reference so difference between 
Bohr effect and Haldane effect you can measure by uh, this uh, diagram. Uh, you can calculate, you can measure, you can write down by yourself uh, which is described here. right? So, I think uh, we should uh, stop our discussion uh, right now uh, with this discuss uh, uh, points. Uh, one point which is associated uh, with the uh, exchange of the gases is chlorine shift which is actually not given into the textbook. Ready? Uh, this is the diagram which is showing the uh, exchange of gases into three way of carbon dioxide, two way of oxygen. Right? Uh, we already have discussed this uh, slide, so I am not going to even describe this slide again. Now, if I talk about the chlorine shift, chlorine shift is, is the mechanism uh, which we already have actually taken into the uh, account uh, while uh, uh, discussing the Halden effect and Bohr effect. Right? So, if you see uh, and if you remind again when at the alveoli oxygen is reaching to the blood, right? uh, it is combining with the hemoglobin molecule that it, it is oxygen is combining with hemoglobin. So, oxyhemoglobin will be formed and this proton will be separated and that proton is going to join HCO3 to form carbonic acid. Now, from where HCO3 coming from the plasma? So, HCO3 is coming from plasma. proton from hemoglobin combines and form H2CO3, that H2CO3 dissociated by carbonic anhydrase into the carbon dioxide and water and that carbon dioxide will be flown out into the air. Now, what we are supposed to remember is whensoever the HCO3 is getting in to compensate pH, chlorine from inside is getting out. Ready? And at the tissue level, when HCO3 is moving out of the cell, chlorine is shifting to in to the RBC. So, with reference to RBC, I repeat with reference to RBC, when chlorine is added into RBC or chlorine is entering the RBC, it is called chlorine shift or chloride shift. And when it is moving out of the cell RBC, it is reverse chloride shift. So, this mechanism is important in order to maintain pH while transportation of gas. This is also one of the important factor to be understood. Please take the screenshot of this slide. So, with chlorine shift, uh, I am ending uh, this uh, session today. I uh, will see you into the next lecture afterwards. Uh, have a nice time and bye.